the meeting to order. Would you please rise to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No service members? Oh, a moment of silence for our service members, please. Thank you. The notice uh, requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey have been satisfied by the inclusion of the date, time, and place of this meeting and the notice of regular meetings adopted by this board on January 9th, 2023. Such schedule and notice of meetings is posted at the Municipal Building, the Mount Olive Library, the Board of Education offices, and the six schools was submitted to the Daily Record for publication on January 13, 2023, and was filed with the Clerk of Mount Olive Township on January 11, 2023. I direct this announcement to be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Do we have a roll call, Ms. Jones? Mrs. Aquino? Here. Mrs. Fenton? Here. Mr. Giordano? Here. Mrs. Melendez? Here. Here. Mr. Strachey? Here. Mr. Zayer? Here. Dr. Gillis? Present. Uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, Ms. Fenton, would you do the honors? Uh, on the recommendation of the acting superintendent, I'd like to approve the minutes 2.1 to 2.3. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call please. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Dr. Giordano? Yes, on 2.1 and 2.2, .2, abstain on 2.3. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes on 2.1 and 2.3 and abstain on 2.2. Mrs. Jeanette? Yes on 1 and 2, abstain on 3. Mr. Stolachi? Yes on 1 and 2, abstain on 3. Mr. Zyre? Yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Dr. Gaines? Uh, yes to 2.1 and 2.2, .2, abstain on 2.3. Are there com any com communications or petitions from the board? Superintendent? No. Okay. Moving right along to reports. Superintendent's report? Yes. At this time, I would like to have Matt Wilcox from Wilcox Associates um, to discuss our audit. Hello, and thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Matt Wilcox. I am from Wilcox & Company. I'm a member at the firm. Uh, I just wanted to come in and talk about the audit. Uh, for the year ended June 30th, 2022. At this point, I'd really like to go over the, uh, just a brief overview of the financials of the district. Uh, it seems that total revenues were strong this year. We increased our fund balance by over a million and a half dollars, which was an increase of 10%. Uh, we got a very healthy fund balance at 16.67 million. So, uh, you know, summary of operations this year were strong. We, we did really well. Another thing I'd like to go through are the comments and recommendations. I just want to note that uh, there are several items where we had none. The administrative practices and procedures, we had no comments or recommendations. Financial planning, accounting, and reporting, we had no comments. School purchasing programs, no comments. In the food service section, we did have two comments. Um, there were a couple instances where receipts were not deposited within 48 hours, which is a state requirement. This is done by the uh, food service company, I believe we talked to them, and they're putting remediation in place. And there was a comment about the district having net cash resources in excess of the allowable amount. That means we have more money than we should. Um, this is a problem that's been all over the state, uh, especially at larger districts that got a lot of federal funds. So I believe uh, that we're putting processes in place. We, we shouldn't expect this much money, you know, the, we went back to the normal rates after COVID, and hopefully that won't be a problem. And there was a comment about state school aid, the ASSA. There were some discrepancies in the report, but we did sit down and make sure that those discrepancies aren't going to be happening for the 2022-2023 school year. We've already done our procedures, and and you know corrective action was taken. Uh, a couple things I would like to mention about the audit. Uh, first of all, it's an absolute pleasure to serve. Thank you very much. Working with uh, Gail and Lynn is a delight. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, Lynn is one of the few, well, personally, the only BA uh, board secretary that I know, assistant BA, that puts the audit report together for us, which is something we normally do. It takes an extraordinary, not extraordinary, it takes a very voluminous amount of time for us to do. 
And uh, I'd like to say thank you to Lynn. It's not commonplace that that happens. Honestly, out of the 50 clients I, I have within the state, not one of them does that. So thank you very much, Lynn. Um, thank you, Lynn. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. And then otherwise, uh, you know, for, for a district of this size, it's a great client, great audit report, and I think you guys should be proud with the, the job that they're doing. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for me? Any questions or comments from the board? I just want to take this opportunity to reiterate um, what Matt shared. Um, certainly, um, Ms. Libby and Ms. Jones are impeccable in their practices. I had the pleasure of working with them this entire school year, and certainly they take their craft very seriously. And, you know, I can't have asked for better team, um, team players. So thank you um, to the both of them. Yeah. Yeah, just one thing to reiterate. I, I mean, I don't know if I could drive this home enough. So I have, we have over 125 municipal clients in the state. We have 50 school, school boards of eds. This is the only one of my clients that gives me the audit report, which is the correct way to do it, right? Most of our clients, we have to come in and put them together. They're very complicated, very complex, very dense documents. As I'm sure all of you can tell, I think you all have copies of them. Um, very time consuming and undoubtedly, if we had to do that, our price would go up as would any of our competitors and it's uh, definitely an asset for this team. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you. Dr. Banji, anything else? Um, certainly, I just want to recognize all the wonderful student activities that have been going on. Certainly, this past week, I, we had a robotics um, competition in which we had our students. I'm, I was floored, um, certainly, attending this for the first time, uh, the awe of the, their passion of what they exhibited and certainly, you know, bo both to Moore and Beta, you know, their just level of enthusiasm and expertise was just, as a 43-year-old, listening along to what they were doing was mind-blowing. So thank you for all their hard work. And certainly, um, also, we had our ROTC team um, going out to compete this weekend. They did a great job. And certainly, to all our winter sports that closed out earlier this month and all the accolades that they had made, you know, we are very proud of our student accomplishments. And thank you for your dedication that extends beyond the classroom. And certainly, um, also, you know, this past winter, we had international students attending um, for our exchange program up to words of six weeks. So we had kids all as young as fifth grade coming to visit us, and certainly the feedback we got from our students and teachers alike in Mount Olive, they really contributed to the, you know, the fabric of our community. Um, so thank you for that as well. Thank you very much. And I think it's important for the public to hear the uh, presentation of the audit report to, to see that we're in a very strong position and that we hear about our student success because not only do we have uh, local, state, and national academic recognition, but now we have a very strong international appeal uh, because of the strong branding and the strong academic profile that Mount Olive uh, is putting out into the community. So uh, I think it's great for the, the public to hear those kinds of things. So thank you very much to Dr. Bangia and the administrative team and teachers and everyone who plays a role in making Mount Olive a great district. Moving right along to personnel committee reports. Ms. Wiemet. Thank you, Dr. Gales. It was myself, Dr. Banja, Ms. Aquino, Mr. Zaire, everybody. Uh, Dr. Banja gave us a very comprehensive uh, review of the professional development that would be uh, presented. Uh, Mr. Zittimer will be doing presentations on policies, procedures, uh, staff issues, HIBs, attendance, social media, communication. Uh, there's going to be a presentation for both certificated and non-certificated staff. As part of the aid retention plan, Ms. Huffman and Ms. Stazak are working with the new aides. Um, Ms. Souffle, our AD, is working with all coaches on, the, on coaching the new athlete. Also, there will be uh, building level PLCs and some vertical articulation, and then the rest of it is just um, action items. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? <coughs> Seeing none, curriculum and technology. Mrs. No. Excuse me. We met on March 6th at 5 o'clock. Present were myself, Dr. Dodano, Ms. Melendez, Dr. Banji, and Mr. Robinson. And we discussed the Varsity Club. Dr. Banji shared a proposal from Colleen Souffle, our athletic director, to repurpose the current MOHS Varsity Club into a student athlete advisory committee. 
Members of the Mount Olive SAC will listen as a liaison between student athletes, the community, and the administration by respectfully maintaining lines of communication in regards to rules, regulations, policies, and student issues. SAC will be a collaborative group that will express opinions, deal with educational issues, and encourage program development. The goal is to support, improve, and raise Mount Olive's athletics profile in the community. We also touched on the Professional Development Day, and Mr. Robinson shared with us the agenda, as Mrs. We Met already tackled. Um, we also talked about summer curriculum writing, that we are proposing uh, course revisions using the Understanding by Design presentation, a curriculum writing site. Dr. Banji and Mr. Robinson explained that this year, all teachers who would like to write curriculum over the summer will be required to be trained in the UBD, which is Understanding by Design, and effective curriculum writing practices. This will help to guide staff in meeting district expectations for course revisions, while ultimately benefiting all staff and students with quality and user-friendly curriculum. Lastly, we talked about mental health topics that we are going to propose, or Dr. Bangia, a parent series sponsored in partnership with the PTOs, covering topics such as HIV and bullying, navigating social media, depression and anxiety, vaping and alcohol and unsupervised parties. Dr. Banji and Mr. Robinson have been meeting with various PTOs and parent organizations in order to create a partnership centered around family communication on mental health topics. And Dr. Banji and Mr. Robinson are working to acquire experts on these various topics to speak to families in the coming weeks. That's all we did. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay, seeing none. Finance and Operations, Mr. Zier. Yeah, I apologize to my fellow board members for not getting the minutes up. Mm -hmm. um, however, in, we met Monday, March 6, 2023. In attendance was Dr. Banji and Mrs. Libby, Len Miller, Elizabeth Wimet, Anthony Sherlock, Mr. Zier, uh, Anthony James Picaro, and Matthew James Picaro for a short time to discuss pro uh, phase three of CMS. Uh, the operations, there are issues with the packed boiler. Uh, parts are becoming scarce, and they need, the boiler may need to be replaced. Uh, we're going out for two competitive quotes for budgetary reasons, and uh, we're just discussing and looking into replacing the boiler with two smaller, bo uh, smaller boilers to give redundancy. Uh, we received our new set of visitor bleachers for the football, uh, for, excuse me, for the multi-sport stadium. This was procured under the ESSER grant. Um, to ensure social distancing with more stands. Um, it is not a permanent set of bleachers because of the proximity to the wetlands. Uh, there's work on multiple rooftop units at the high school with varying uh, issues. We're doing that with our uh, HVAC department, a little understaffed at this point in time. Uh, so we're working through that. Um, we had a drain in the high school. This one right my favorites, due to vapes, clogging it up. So it had to be jet uh, cleaned. This was a cost of the district for $4,920. I will bring up my uh, discussion about how vaping tobacco products or use of tobacco products is illegal on public grounds. And can you can be summoned for that. Uh, we had a sewer pipe that broke behind the uh, wall in the boys locker room. Um, and it was corroded through. This was just prior to the uh, wrestling tournament that took place, so we want to give a big thanks to Pat Spezza, Rob Kelman, and Jim Carpizzi for pr producing an expert repair and not disrupting the tournament and with a tremendous saving to the district. Uh, again, as I said, Gene Picaro, Architects, Engineers, and Plans, brought us to speed on Phase 3 CMS, and various projects were discussed and prioritized based on funding availability uh, after the budget after the budget can be fully explored. RS Schools today is a customization to allow for rented locations, the dome, and it was kind of a software change to ensure that we could kind of break the dome into three different, or, or various different sections. Um, there were 123 summons issued in this month, February month thing for passing school buses. Uh, I actually was able to witness one of these school buses. Um, it is not about the money. A truck passed a flashing school bus on the right where school kids were crossing the road 
to come over about six feet away from the kids. Okay? There are other videos on the internet that are not as great, and it really is about protecting these kids. And I don't care if it takes 120 summonses a month for people to start learning their um, this. safety. Absolutely. Um, uh, out of those, there were three court sessions held, 97 cases were heard, and all were found guilty. Nice. Uh, Gaggle and Bark again doing what they need to do with 45 alerts for Bark and 30 for Gaggle. Um, scheduling, the you know, discovery, from the discovery was provided for individuals and attorneys for the buses. Uh, our security and fire drills were done, and we done we did excellent for throughout the district. Um, five students have been caught for vaping within the high school. Um, hopefully, we're getting that down to zero. Um, the district wide radio project. The command radio has been in district installing antennas and repeated to various locations throughout the township as well as programming portable radios. Uh, the project is moving forward, but we do still have the issues, and I'll get to that when we get to transportation. Um, three, two residence hearings were held, and three children were found not to be in Mount Olive. We're up to about 18 children, and per the figures, that's about a cost savings of $306,000 to the district. As for transportation, uh, still working with attendance. Um, We've had um, some, the February 22nd was Bus Driver Appreciation Day. Um, I actually like to wave to the bus drivers as they go by uh, every day as I see them. So um, I encourage everybody to do the same. Um, I celebrated, um, the drivers got treats and roses. Additionally, Tints Road provided little tokens of appreciation as well. The long-awaited large wheelchair bus was finally delivered, and this bus has the, uh, is able to carry three wheelchairs, which is awesome, as Unified Sports has been taking off, and the spring season is coming up. We can hopefully be able to address the needs. So um, the MOSA Mount Olive Success Academy routes were finalized. Um, they're a little longer than we'd like due to enrollment, but uh, we should be able to go. And utilizing that program is the bus right, which is where it's a routing table that will help us to be more efficient in our bus driving routing. And that will be, the MOSA will actually be kind of the, the beta test for that. Uh, gatekeeper sent installers to equip the, the new bus with uh, surveillance cameras. The other cam port replacement front facing cameras have been installed. And we're just waiting for the rewind feature to be added to our video software. It actually has been added. This, it got added on Friday. The wait is over, <laughs> <laughs> and we have that now. Uh, and uh, we also have a joint transportation agreement between Stillwater Township and Mount Olive Township that is on the agenda for today. This is just, uh, again, as a last resort vendor, we're trying to put that redundancy that we build not only in our boilers but everything else to ensure that our students are able to get there. That is all I have. And again, I apologize for not posting. As usual, that's a lot. So, are there any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none. A policy and governance. Uh, Mrs. Uh, we did not meet. Oh, We're okay. Meet, um, either tomorrow or next Tuesday. Okay. Fantastic. Depends on the weather. Yeah, depends on the weather. Okay. Before we move on to a uh, board subcommittee reports, I just want to ask Mr. Shilachi, is there anything that you can update us on regarding yeah, we, the referendum? We, we met again this morning. Uh, uh, Dr. Summit had several uh, different level administrators come, so to get their input also. Uh, we, are, we are narrowing it down. We're getting very, very close to, uh, to coming out um, and letting the people know. We are trying to have a referendum that is strictly for need, not for want, uh, because that's, that's so expensive, that's what we could try to tell the people that, that they could vote for that, because it's strictly need for the children. There's no, there's no wants in, in this particular thing, and it just adds up very, very quickly. We will be meeting again next Monday, here again with several people, and uh, we will, at that point, probably finalize what we are going to come out with. And we'll have all the answers for you then. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay, moving right along, board subcommittee and parent-teacher association liaison reports. 
Do we have any representatives? Hi, Tara Kovach, Tins Road PTO. It's been a while since I've been here, so I have a lot to share with you guys. Um, we kicked off the year in January by celebrating National Popcorn Day by delivering popcorn to all students, teachers, and staff. Thank you to Sinopolis of Hackettstown for donating the popcorn to us. Our ever so popular Woot Woot Wagon made its appearance for our January Friday. Mrs. Otteson and her crew drove the cart around to all teachers and staff delivering snacks and beverages to help them get through, it, through the week. Thank you to our, our anonymous donor for sponsoring that Friday. Our Crafts and Cookies Night was a huge success. Over 150 students and their families attended this free event. Kristen Knight did a wonderful job putting together the evening with several craft stations where students could follow simple instructions and put together crafts like dream catchers, stress balls, and reading pointers. Snacks were also provided throughout the night. And a special thanks to Mrs. Hund and the Education Association of Mount Olive for their generous grant making it possible for us to provide this as a free event. In February, we showed our bus drivers some love on Bus Driver Appreciation Day. Spider-Man hopped on all the buses and handed out Dunkin' gift cards to all our superhero drivers. Thank you to Honest Heating and Cooling for sponsoring this great event. Students, teachers, and parents glowed crazy at our glow dance held at the middle school. Mrs. Otteson and her team did an excellent job as always. We had face painting, tattoos, drawing station, and a lot of snacks. The glow in the dark dance floor was filled with parents and students in glow-tastic outfits, dancing to the great music provided by DJ Al of Al Lewis Entertainment. Our science fair was held last week and was such a great success. Our scientists were so proud of all their hard work and we were very excited to be able to share their projects with the judges and their friends and their teachers. Thank you to Zebra Robotics and Flanders Volunteer Fire Department for the activities they provided for our scientists and their families while they waited for judging. Thank you to the National Science Honor Society members for taking the time to judge our projects. And special shout out to Brando's Pizza for donating pizzas for our volunteers. Congratulations to our winners and good luck to them in the district science fair next week. We showed the teachers a whole lot of love in February, in our February Friday, thanks to the Lipniscus family. Teachers got to select a blind bag that had all different kinds of treats in them. They were also treated to crumble cookies. Thank you to Crumble Cookies for their generous donation for that day. And to celebrate Pie Day, which is tomorrow, we partnered with Branda's Italian Restaurant again and sold homemade pizza kits to our families. We sold over 200 kits. Thank you to Claude and his team at Branda's for all their hard work. It's actually been rescheduled to Wednesday since we don't know what that weather is going to be like. So better be safe than sorry or stuck with a whole lot of dough. <laughs> And last but not least, the moment everyone has been waiting for, the high-flying, fantastic Harlem Wizards are coming to Mount Olive to take on the Tinch Trotters. The Trotters are a team of teachers and staff from Mount Olive, including our very own Dr. Bangia and Mr. Grillo. They will be here on March 26th at 4 p.m. Limited VIP and reserve tickets are available, so get your tickets today. You can go to harlemwizards.com and search for the Flanders game to, for more information. We also had the Harlem Wizards. Rob Young, from, also known as Mr. Smooth, came to um, all of the elementary schools and the middle school for a little assembly uh, this past week, and everyone loved it. We had a great time. So next up, our, our March meeting is March 30th. Right now, it's scheduled to be at the Tints Library. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay, Ms. O'Neill. Jeannie O'Neill for CPEG. I didn't report last meeting. <laughs> Our last CPEG meeting was February 16th. Um, I, was, I did attend the meeting, but I, my camera was off, so I know Mr. Zaire wasn't sure if I was there or not, but my son was in the hospital and I was in the room went next to him, so I did not turn the camera on. Um, it, we had the unified best buddies, um, the best buddies, kids that help our kids come on and talk about their experience being best buddies and what, you know, it's like. And it, uh, to me, that it was great to hear that how much they love it, how much it means to them, because it means so much to us. And so to be able to hear, you know, from their side was 
great. Our next meeting is tomorrow night. It's virtual, so it won't matter if it snows, but um, it's a parent-only meeting. CPEG is also um, working with Dr. Bangia for the mental health series um, with the parent group. So um, we, I, I did express to Dr. Bangia because we're inclusive that, you know, we have have to take that into consideration with the parent that they're, you know, and with the kids that there's everybody's together. So it's like, you know, presenting to all the different levels. And I know that that's hard. So we are going to have a meeting and just see if anybody is concerned about anything else that I didn't bring up when we met. And so um, that's tomorrow night. And we're still looking for a secretary. So if anybody, anybody hears of anybody who takes good notes, <laughs> we need somebody. But um, that that's all. And Sandshore had a science fair, and it was great. Mr. Zayer was there. It really was a great time. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. I have one question. I know it's a little bit of a stare. How is your son doing? Um, he's he's back at work and he's doing a lot better. It was a very big scare and Absolutely. never wanted to have that happen again. So, awesome. To hear Any questions or comments from the board? Anyone else from the audience? Hi, I'm Stacy Balada and I'm from the Flanders PTA. We've had a very busy couple of months. Some recent activities include the Mountain View Science Fair, which was held last week on 3-7. All the projects were amazing, and our winners are looking forward to the District Science Fair. STEAM Night was also last week on 3-9. This was organized by the school administration, and the FPTA donated popcorn and water for all students. The Girls Dance was held on February 16th at Moms, and the students had a great time. This dance was sponsored by the NJEA Pride Grant. We have ordered our folders and agendas for the 2023-24 school year with the Flanders PTA supplies to students. We are running an amazing fundraiser through Display My Art. Our amazing art teacher worked with each student to create a piece of art that parents can then print on a variety of items like mugs, magnets, flags, anything that is listed in the brochure and the best thing is that it's mailed directly home. The sale will go on for another few weeks. Mountain View yearbooks are currently on sale. The yearbook committee is hard at work putting this together. The Flanders PTA offers Mountain View staff the ability to apply for grants for their classroom. This could include an item or a program that they would like to use. Applications have gone out and are due back to the PTA by March 31st. A couple upcoming events. The Boys Night is going to be held at Mountain View on March 23rd and will be a night of fitness activities, craft refreshments, and music for boys, their moms, grandmas, or aunts, or anyone else they would like to bring. This event is also sponsored by the NJE Pride Grant. A BMX bike show assembly for the whole school is scheduled for April 5th. Our spring clothing drive is on April 29th, so start cleaning out your closets. We get paid. Um, it's a quick, easy fundraiser. And our upcoming elections for the Flanders PTA Executive Board is also coming up uh, for the 23-24 school year. That's it. I just have one question. Yeah. The April 5th, you said it's a BMX bike show? It's a BMX bike show. What time is that? <laughs> I believe it's at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? Yeah, it's during school hours. It's fantastic. We haven't had it um, in a few years. Last time we had it was right before COVID. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, just uh, one comment uh, from the um, Minority Theater School PTO. Uh, they met this week, this last week, and they announced that they're going to have the book fair the, uh, the upcoming week is March 20th, and they are looking for volunteers, five volunteers to help out throughout the week um, over there. So anyone that is at the middle school, please. Um, consider to volunteer with them. I will be there on the 20th. I'm going to volunteer also. And they have a parent night. Uh, I think it's the first day of that week. Great. Any other board members attend any other events? PTOs, PTAs? Okay. Thank you very much to our PTA, PTO partners. By all of your reports, there are wonderful things happening at each school and if you send the information to the board, we're, we're happy to come out and support. Uh, if uh, you send it to Ms. Jones, she'll make sure that we get it, and we will be there with bells on. So thank you.
Thank you all very much for your efforts on behalf of our students. I have no report, so we will go straight to public comments on action items. Members of the community may comment on any action item prior to board discussion. Please state your name and address for the record. All comments must be respectfully presented. Abusive or obscene comments will not be accepted. We are accepting comments on action items. Martin Wells Muller, 25 Woodcrest Avenue, Bud Lake, New Jersey. Um, I have a question, one, one concerning the audit, um, which was I've discussed earlier, and then I have questions on the action items that are also presented to us today. W with the audit that you guys put together, I actually read the damn thing, by the way. That's a lot of stuff in there, 189 pages. Okay. Um, but do you have any accounting ledgers where you show where how the money is moved out throughout the year through the district? Is there an accounting ledger that the public can see how funds are moved? No, when money is moved from one journal, like when you do action as you move money from one 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 pile to the other, is there a ledger with the transfer yeah, showing how money is moved? You'll see one in the, in the financial report, you'll see that. Yeah, but is there, it shows is, the original budget and the adjusted budget. Yeah, but is there an Excel spreadsheet showing when the funds are no, moving? No, that's not required to be in the report. Okay, is it is it permissible for someone for the community to see that in the board building, to see the, those type of reports? Yeah, we have financial reports, internal reports, yeah. Which is which, which the people in the community are allowed to see. Is, I just want to make sure. I want to ask that question. All right. Now the other question I have in action item uh, nine point one approval of the travel maximum travel resolution. Now my question: Are these the same as last year, or are these increases from year before? You don't give if the increase from one year from the other year. So my question is: Are there any increases from the prior years for the teachers uh, further in their education, or is it kept relatively the same? When um, All right, cool. I just wanted to learn how this goes on. It's a question I can ask. And then, um, obviously, now I also see that we have an enrollment tax levy. Now, I mean, anything I see seen tax levy means an increase in taxes to the Mount Olive? Not All right. Because I was going to ask, did, is this, with all these information, does it take in consideration the new proposed possible state aid of the $8.7 million? Tonight, the, the resolutions that you see on tonight's agenda are exclusively for me as the business administrator and the preparer of the budget to submit the budget to the county. Okay. So um, between now and April 24th, which I believe is the day of the public hearing, um, it'll, the county is reviewing it. Um, once it is finished at the county level, it will be advertised. At that point, um, there's hours that people could come in and view the budget, and then the public hearing is the end of April. So the budget committee will be meeting in the next a couple times over the next few weeks to look at the um, budget in detail, and we have from now until the public hearing to make any changes that are deemed necessary. Okay, All right, I guess my last question will be for you concerning. I know the health care. We show 1.5. I think was it, I think last year was 2.5 or was it 2. Million? There was no health care adjustment last year. The reason why we are eligible and most districts in the state will be eligible for health care adjustment is because the state health benefit plan increased their rates by 15 percent. So that because our rates are at that point, we do get the ability to because they went up so high that we could raise ours. So we're still in the state plan. You well, no. So um, new employees that are in what's called EHP, now there's GSP, those are two state plans. However, the traditional plan still exists here in the district for um, staff that were here prior to the 1st of July 2020. And um, we are self-insured. That's what I thought, yeah. So what that means is we do not pay based upon premiums. We pay based upon the claims of our participants or our, our staff that are in I just remember something last year they said that we were being self-funding and it was a two million. Yeah, and the whole the whole from last year the whole plan is self-insured, but there's the traditional plan group, there's the EHP, and there's GSP. It's all, all one. one plan, but the two are considered a state versus the other one, which is considered a private. So, as self-insured, again, we we pay based upon our claims 
not on the actual okay. premium. So the word tax levy here does not necessarily mean that there's going to be higher taxes on the residents, correct? It does not. Um, the tax um, increase is impacted not only by the increase in the tax levy, but what the activity is in the net evaluation. Okay. All right. Close okay. So um, it, it could go down. Okay. Well, I was, when you look at this, mm -hmm. tax levy always means that you're levying something on someone. Correct. That's why correct. I but there are, there, are, there are instances where it actually, even though it's... It's an increase to the tax levy based upon the increase in rateables. If they're increasing at a greater rate, then there actually could be. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. And that, that's my other question was that, so in your model, you didn't take, did you or did you not take in consideration the possible, the $8.7 million as per the Murphy administration announced? All of the state aid is in this budget. So that includes that eight. All that $8 okay. million is in this budget, correct. Okay, all right, thank you. That's mm -hmm. all I have. Any other public? Comments on action items? I don't know if it's an action item. I just, CPEG got an email to, if I would, for someone for me to ask the board if our bowling team was sanctioned, and I, I said I would. Okay. So that would. Or that, unified. Would that be at the end? Yes, that would be in the second one. <laughs> Any other public comments on action items? Okay, we will close the. Public comment section, Ms. Jones. And let's jump right into monthly expenditures. Uh, Mrs. Aquino, would you kindly uh, move the monthly expenditures? Certainly. I'd like to make a motion to approve items 6.1 through 6.4. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. Mrs. Jumet? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mr. Zayer? Yes. Dr. Gales? Yes. Personnel, action items, Ms. We met. Yes, I make a motion upon the recommendation of the acting superintendent to move action item 71 with a heavy heart through 719. Second. Questions or comments from the board? Mrs. We met? I would like to give much thanks to Dr. Brad Helene for the years in service he has given to this community, for the students. Thank you so much for everything that you have done. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call please. Mrs. Yes, uh, staying on 711 and 714. Mr. Yes, I also echo Dr. Bradley, and I met with him today. I brought him a bottle of champagne. <laughs> I mean a Coke. Uh, <laughs> and Brad, thank you. And I said to Brad, he's in his office there, and nobody knows the value of what he does. I mean, he used to be our math supervisor, but he's not. nobody knows the value. But he, he's so important to what we do, but he's locked away in a little room, and nobody <laughs> sees him. He's not high profile. But well, boy, I'll tell you, you're going to be best, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Zayer? Uh, yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Dr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. Dr. Gales? Yes. We're moving on to curriculum and technology. Mrs. Aquino? I'd like to make a motion upon the recommendation of the acting superintendent to approve action items 8.1 through 8.8. Second. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Dr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. Mrs. Jeanette? Yes, I'd like to make a note about 8.8. .8. So happy to see the culinary program there at CCS. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. Mr. Zayer? Yes. And Dr. Gales? Yes. A finance, Mr. Zayer. Uh, I'd like to make a recommendation, uh, based on the recommendation of the action attendant, I'd like to move action items 9.1 through 9.14. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? <laughs> yes. Um, this is for you, Ms. Libby. 
I have questions on 9.12, and then maybe there's a piece that I can add to help Mr. Wells deal with. Is this an anticipation of an increase in our costs for the health care? This is in addition to. In yes. addition to? Yes. Um, and is the plan running above or below what was expected for the it's claims? It's running plan? a little bit above what was expected as the months have been going in and the bills have been coming. It's been dropping. Mm -hmm. It started really high as the year goes on, it starts to drop off. We are meeting with um, Hudson Shore at the mm -hmm. end of the month to discuss where we are for the rest of this year and what we anticipate we're going to be looking at for next year. Okay. And that, in, so the anticipation then, so Mr. Wells, I'm sure you understand, the state health benefit plan went up 15%. We have a 2% cap. We're allowed that differential of the 13%. So is that what we're, we're taking into account then? Yes. Yes. Because okay. we're again, our, our claims have gone through the roof past few years. And I think everybody's experiencing yep. that coming off of COVID. So, um, you know, when you have a couple of big claims on there, it does feed up into it. And so uh, we're anticipating it to continue. Oh, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Byer? Yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Dr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. Mr. Lamet? Yes. Mr. Strelacci? Yes. And Dr. Gill? Yes. Uh, Dr. Giordano, do you mind moving uh, administrative action item? Not a problem. On the recommendation of the acting superintendent, approve 10.1. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call, please. Dr. Yes. Mrs. Melendez? Yes. Mrs. Narcisse? Yes. Mrs. Lumet? I have stand on 10 1, but very happy to see us doing that. Mr. Stralachi? Yes. Mr. Zier? Yes. Mrs. Aquino? Yes. Mrs. Fenton? Yes. Dr. Gales? Yes. Public comments. Students, parents, employees, and community members may comment on any item of interest pertaining to the Mount Olive School District. Please state your name and address for the record. All comments must be respectfully presented. Abusive or obscene comments will not be accepted. Karen Fumero, 133 Flanders Drakes Down Road, for anybody that wasn't sure. Um, I'm actually going to start off with some positive things. I feel like everybody could use that. Um, first thing I want to say, good job to Mrs. Jones and Miss Libby. Uh, truly, I hear you guys sometimes respond to things, and it's amazing to me what you hold in your brains, and it, we are so fortunate to have you, and I think it's a, a very under-recognized role that, that happens, so thank you for that. Um, I also want to say how grateful I am for a meeting that I had with Dr. Bangia last week um, regarding an issue that I was having uh, related to my son. Her approachability and professionalism um, were a welcome breath of fresh air. And I, I feel like I need to say that sincerely. Um, the third one I wanted to say, just speaking of the bus drivers and the amount of um, infractions that have been happening, I live on Flanders Drakestown Road. It's a busy road. Um, when my children were younger. They rode the bus. I don't let them ride anymore. Um, one of the reasons was before cameras were put out, um, someone actually went around the bus and they were crossing Flanders Drakestown Road. Um, and I ran into the middle of the road and did my whole mom thing. Um, but the bus drivers are incredible because on our tiny little road with no sidewalk, with no buffer, they would kind of position the bus after that so that you couldn't actually get around them. There wasn't enough room because it's a very narrow back and forth. So um, the other thing that they do is um, I pick up at the high school in the afternoon and when the kids are crossing, I think that's Flanders Net Kong. I'm not sure what the name of that road is, but the kids cross the crosswalk over to like the Carlton area. And rarely cars will stop and the bus drivers always stop and block traffic so that the kids can cross safely. So our bus drivers are amazing. Again, so many things that they deserve credit for, but two things that just truly need to be acknowledged. Um, I have to say thank you to Tara. Um, she's a fifth grade teacher. I mean, uh, she's the fifth grade um, PTO president at Tins, and she's been there for a few years. And she's done some incredible things at Tins. And fifth grade parent, she's moving on to the middle school. We are so fortunate to have had 
her creativity and her enthusiasm and, and truly the programs at TINS have, have changed under her. And she's really just awesome. Um, we're so lucky to have her and I know she'll be missed, but I have a fifth grader too, so I'm hoping that like she'll keep going at the middle school, but she's wonderful. Um, I, I just wanted to say something too, to the mom from CPEG. Um, I, I literally shake, I, I hate public speaking, I'm so sorry. Um, it's a quiet reminder that everyone's going through something. And sometimes in spite of those things, they still give up their time, their family, to support our community. Um, you're all volunteers, so I'm preaching to the choir. Um, but the amount of volunteers that contribute to this community, despite everything, um, we're very fortunate. And I just wanna take a moment. Um, to, I tell you guys as volunteers, thank you, but um, just to all the volunteers, thank you for everything you do. Um, with that, I'm two pages shorter than last week, last meeting, so <laughs> working on my editing skills. Um, I feel as though my pleas are futile efforts at this point, so I'm going to take a different approach and just speak my piece. I'm deeply saddened by the seemingly constant efforts to undermine the Board of Education. The Board of Ed is the checks and balance. It's the fail safe and the deciding factor between recommendation and action. You all, as a single entity, are important, plain and simple. Trying to discredit you as a whole is not a badge of honor. It's rather a sad state of affairs. I wish people would spend as much energy coming to meetings to ask questions and seek clarification as is spent spreading misinformation and half-truths. Among those being, one, last meeting, a Board of Ed member was excused from closed session prior to the public meeting resuming and the community was in an uproar. However, after the public meeting, another closed session took place with a different board member excluded and there was no concern. I'd like to point out that members are often excused for various reasons and it's not a coup. Please correct me if I'm wrong. As an aside to last meeting, someone took it upon themselves to mention how I spend my free time in a public space behind an unlocked door. I encourage anyone to walk through the unlocked door into the public room and join the conversation next time. And for anyone concerned, after I spoke publicly at a meeting in November of 2021, I was contacted by both our superintendent and then board president to address my concerns. It's been my experience that this is standard practice and I hope that the concerns are not intended to dis discredit this president. You may also be happy to know that none of my concerns were addressed and I do in fact have plenty to talk about with my fellow community members and acting head of my son's school that doesn't involve the board. Two, the timing and convenience of pointing out certain financial interactions is laughable when we for well over a year have been asking, the board has been asking, um, for the financials from the Ed Foundation to cover the scoreboard. No one questions turf fields, domes, and other non-academic investments, but there's an issue when health insurance or new student costs or maintaining our buildings come up. I don't pretend to understand the nitty gritty of our finances, but I know that if I ask, I'll get an answer. So why not ask the questions instead of spreading rumors? The need three, the need for a state moderator. From what I've read, if tenure charges are certified, the state will investigate our district without the threat of taking over. So why not certify the charges and kill two birds with one stone? Four, None, and let me repeat that, none of the Board of Ed members are martyrs or watchdogs. If they are, they are failing at their duties and role they agreed to uphold. With that said, at the January 27th meeting, a prepared statement was read saying that there was an investigator hired by the Mount Olive Board of Ed. I Oprahed, and there are no records of an investigation nor a payment for the investigation that was referenced. To make that statement publicly directly violates New Jersey Statute 18A 12-21.1, Section E. As does the action of requesting a state monitor, moderator and including a statement that was printed in the newspaper that took a singular side of an issue which directly impacts the public's opinion. I'll go no further on this because it would only sink the district deeper into a legal black hole and distract from more pressing issues, but I see these actions as something less than altruistic as they are being peddled to the public. New Jersey Statute 18A 12-24, uh, 12 1 Section I states, a board member will support and protect school personnel in proper performance of their duty. It is your duty to protect the administrators that bravely spoke up to bring attention to the horrors happening in Mount Olive School District before any whistleblower emails were ever drafted so they can perform their duties. 
It's your responsibility to see the repeated misdirection around the scoreboard, attacks against MOASA members publicly, as well as Board of Ed members, to hear the intentionally demoralizing attacks on a male staff, to listen to the tape of illegal behavior, to recognize the frivolous, ever-changing torts to conflict the board. You need to protect our administrators, our staff, yourselves, our community, and our children. Because if these tenure charges are not certified, you are putting a nail in the coffin of any integrity this district has left and any thought that it's ever been anything more than one man's playground. I want to wish Dr. Helene a peaceful retirement and thank him for his many years of service to our district and children, and especially to thank him for remaining the past year and standing up for what's truly important. As always, thank you for your time. Have a good night. How fast was that? Martin Wells Miller, 25 Woodcrest Avenue, Bud Lake, New Jersey. I'm going to start off first with the history of the Holocaust trip that my daughter's on and 20 other students, which are having a blast over in Europe right now. Uh, however, like the, the food's better in Poland than it was in Germany, as per the girls. Um, they weren't used to Wiener Schnitzel, but they like pierogies. Tonight, they had a class making pierogies for dinner, so they got to make their own pierogies tonight to eat tonight. Um, so just on that note, the kids are having a, an amazing time out there. Everyone's safe. My daughter has a credit card, scares me, but uh, they're all safe. Um, getting back to two things I like, to, well, a few things I'd like to address for tonight. Um, first off, last board meeting, uh, action item number 10.2 happened to do with the return of funds from the history of the Holocaust. And I asked you, was the rationale why you put on there correct? And the board answer was, Yes, is that correct? Is that fair to say? Well, okay, go ahead. This is not a back I, I'm just, well, because I know Mr. Gale said yes, unless I knew something different. Why well, Oprah requested an email, all right, and I'm going to read the email in its entirety because it was sent to the whole board and you all have this. So last month's meeting, you would have already known this information, so therefore then you would have known that the answer that you guys put on here for this was not exactly the truth, okay? There was an email sent from the Ed Foundation on February 21st from Howie Weiss, the president of the Ed Foundation. And it goes as follows. Good afternoon, Lynn. Please pass this on to Dr. Gales and the entire Board of Education. I'd like the details of this letter addressed publicly in its entirety for the next board meeting regards. Dear Dr. Gales, over the past month or so, it's become clear that to all of us that there was a majority disconnect between the Ed Foundation and the Board of Education. No one's going to argue with that. Okay, it also been clear that, that this is a request that you appointed someone, and you did appoint someone, okay, as a liaison, and the communication of these two entities. And, um, and he goes, I'm not sure that you appointed, appointment is going to work. So they obviously they didn't like the person who was appointed. I'm not going to mention who, but that's not up to me. Okay, as president of the Education Foundation, it is my goal to say, clear of the distractions that have nothing good to do with us, and I'm working hard to stay away from personal disagreements, political posturing, and any other form of censorship promoting someone else's agenda. My job is to keep the foundation moving forward as we work to accomplish our goals and nothing more. I quickly realized that the message intended for the Board of Education are not being delivered. So from this point forward, I will deal directly with the Board of Education to, del to deliver any and all details that is needs to be shared. We still, still, still copy the Board of Education in our meeting minutes, but understand much of our work is done outside our meetings. On February 10th meetings, she, uh, uh, Howie Weiss met with Dr. Banjir, Board Member Jenna Quino, and, Do and Dr. Hamilton in the Board of Education. We accomplished many items uh, and a message that I expect to be presented at the Board of Education was clear. Unfortunately, the delivery was not as agreed upon, and so I review that here. The main reason that we met was to discuss the donation made in 2022 to the Board of Ed Foundation to be used for the Holocaust program trip to Europe. In 2022, there was a need to pay for expenses for a school nurse. We had a donor that offered to pay those expenses, but when the trip was canceled, there was no need for a nurse. So Dr. Hamilton requested if she could keep the money going forward in 2023 and 2024. I explained that I needed to speak to the donor to see how they felt. I immediately reached out to the donor, who happens to be Dr. Robert Zwicky, who offered to allow this, the money to be made, uh, to keep the money for the school trip. His only request was to source the money to be made public and that the announcement to be made by Dr. Zwicky had offered to let the money stay remain for the school trip. Not only was this subject 
of the meeting never mentioned during the Board of Education meeting on February 13, 2023, but the request of the donor was never mentioned. The donor was contingent upon the sources of these funds being made public, meaning that you had to disclose that Dr. Zwicky donated the $5,100. But for some reason, the Board of Education did not correctly do, do the correct thing and decided to keep this detail away from the public. As I mentioned earlier, I have no time or interest in the agenda of the Board of Education outside those dealings with the well-being of the students. Being that the Board of Education was unable or unwilling to meet such simple requests, I request that the $5,100 be returned to the Board of Education. Now that is the answer. It was returned because you guys failed to mention who the donor was. When, if the public uh, questions this loss of money, I want it to be a record to be clear that the Board of Education chose to keep this information from the public and failed in its obligation to provide the information. This is coming from the Ed Foundation, not from me. Okay, now this, it gets better. Okay, next, I'd like to address the fact that the Education Foundation recently lost $150,000 for scoreboard donation initiatives due to the actions of the Board of Education. These actions included, but are not limited to recent lawsuits the Board is involved with the fact that the Board of Education recently transferred approximately $165,000 into legal funds, and the fact that the Board of Education hired a private investigator to investigate the Ed Foundation for, someone, for, for some of which had no business dealing with the Board of Education. I'm working to do what I can to save these uh, uh, valuable commitments. With loss of donations, as um, uh, mentioned above, the Ed Foundation does not have time or the manpower nor a desire to find replacement donors for the scoreboard. I he suggested that Dr. Banger, uh, that she reach out to the scoreboard manufacturer to have them assist in fundraising process. They would be willing to do so if you have previously reached out to them to assist. I suggest that you reach out to them for assistance. My message was not to deliver to the Board of Education either, but I'm, I'm officially requesting that the Board of Education reach out to the manufacturer and they will assist you, uh, the Board, at no cost. So my question is, why were we investigating the Ed Foundation donors that cost us $150,000 in donations? So there were investigations done which aren't in the meetings, to mention someone else's comments before. The Ed Foundation lost $150,000 of donations. And on top of that, the money had to be returned, not because of the school nurse, it's because you didn't commit, the board didn't keep their commitment to the Ed Foundation. This has to be a fair and equal program. All right, if you're asked to do something, to get something, you should keep that commitment, okay? And lastly, I wanna talk about is that, you know, I wanna know if our attorney here apologized to our board for sharing emails like he did in Randolph. He did apologize to the board about sharing an email from a friend of mine. And I wanna know if he apologized to our board here for illegally sharing the emails here. And if not, I'm gonna ask him the request to, to resign. That's my last request. Any questions? Honesty, integrity. That's all I can ask for. Honesty and integrity. Uh, Brianne Jarvis, 54 Deer Path Drive. Um, <clears throat> I'm here tonight to request that you certify the tenure charges against Dr. Zwicky. It's my understanding that an independent investigator has done an investigation and determined these charges are actionable. It is now the, your responsibility to take action and your failure to do so to date has been negligent. Employees are protected from sexual harassment by state and federal law and district policy. Tenure is not meant to exempt one from these laws and policies. A neutral third party is um, hired to commit or to conduct investigations to prevent bias from influencing the investigation. A neutral third party has determined the claims are verifiable. And uh, Mrs. Narcisse, it is not your job to state that you think the claims are, are retaliatory um, to clearly show bias against Mr. Miller, implying that he and other administrators are not being truthful. Respect the process and act um, on the findings. As a human resources manager, I understand the importance of protecting employee rights and enforcing a safe and healthy workplace free of hostile work environment. Let, re let me remind you of a few key statements in the district mission statement. Individuals are responsible and accountable for their actions. The school district has a role in defining, modeling, and promoting values and ethics. 
people function best in a safe, supportive environment. If Dr. Zawicki returns, be prepared to answer questions about how you plan to ensure that first, every penny spent is done so lawfully and ethically. The frequency and type of sexual harassment training provided to staff and how you plan to protect all staff from a hostile work environment moving forward. And where do you plan to move the money from to pay for the multiple lawsuits I have no doubt that Mr. Miller and other administrators will file due to your failure to do your job and to certify the tenure charges? Thank you. Hang on one second with Mr. Wells Muller. Have... Right, so okay. when he's done, you can come back up. Okay. Go ahead, Bill. such a serious night here, I hate to bring up something nice. I have not had many times lately where I've been able to be truly happy, but I spent the weekend at the high school, at the robotics program. And besides the fact that you, you haven't seen so many kids have so much fun as they did, not necessarily all the robot teams, but the audience. They had a, a tremendous time. But the one thing that affected me more than anything else was that Mount Olive had 150 volunteers. And those volunteers, some of them, have been coming since the inception of the program. Their kids graduated 20 years ago. And to me, it just goes to show what Mount Olive is and was for a lot of years. And which, from what I'm hearing tonight, is so far away from that. And it just, it's just, it is just so sad. It really is. But I want to thank those people who come back year after year after year, put in two very difficult days. I mean, they're like 12 hour days. And, you know, they just keep coming and they support us and that's something that's really, really nice. Thank you. Well, Martin Walsmo again, 25 Wickfest Avenue. Now, I know some people came up here carrying water for some other people. I love that expression. Um, but not for others. But it is a board member's job to stand up when they see things wrong. That's their job. I speak to board members all across the state. When they see something's wrong, they have a right and an obligation to speak up and say something. This is not an opportunity to gaslight anyone. It's not an opportunity to take advantage of everyone. The facts are what the facts are. So treat everyone with respect. Don't gaslight anyone. And it is people's job. It's your job. It's your job. It's your job. Yours. It's all of your jobs. Okay? And everyone has a right to do what they feel is best for the township. That's all I have to say. And not carrying any water, just let everyone know. All right. Any other? <laughs> now my question seems really silly, but <laughs> um, I'll ask it anyway because I said I would. The, the um, typical JV and varsity bowling team is sanctioned as what the word she said was, and to ask if the unified team and the Special Olympics team that Mount Olive runs can be sanctioned as well because the kids are missing out on awards and scholarships and the banquet and the tournaments. So um, I guess the district pays for the bowling team to be sanctioned and they just want the unified team to be sanctioned as well. So I said I would, I, I don't know what that means though, but well, Jeannie, so the answer to your question is they're all sanctioned. The unified team? Yeah, they're unified as well as the, um, um, uh, um, the JV and varsity um, bowling team. But, you know, if that parent reached out to you, if she can reach out to me for further clarification exactly what she was looking for, okay. then um, we can take it from there. Okay, I'll tell them. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, sir, come on up. Uh, Charles Aaron, uh, 9 Victoria Drive, Flanders. I uh, just wanted to take a, an evening, a moment to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a new town councilman 
here in Mount Olive, and I've been asked to be the Board of Education liaison to the town council. So I've lived in town for 18 years. Both of my boys have gone through the entire Mount Olive school system. Um, my youngest son is a senior right now, and uh, the school system's fantastic for what it provides to the kids and the opportunities after. Um, so I brought some business cards to give everybody my, my contact if you, if you need to reach out. Uh, I do have a business in town. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? No, not, no, thank you. Uh, but I'll be here as, what's that? Yeah. I'll be here as many meetings as I can. I'll try to free my schedule up, but I do appreciate that you stream online that I can watch when I can't. So thank you. All right. Nice meeting you too. Thanks. Are there any other public comments? Anything pertaining to the Mount Isle School District? Seeing none, close the public session. Uh, is there any old business of the board? Any new business? Okay. We will do the round robin board comments. Dr. Giordano. Thank you, Mr. President. No comment. We met. Of course, I always have a comment. Thank you. Uh, first, it brings everyone's attention. It's Women's History Month. So always respecting and honoring all women, past, present, and future. Uh, the second thing I wanted to bring up was some happy to see 7.17 job shadow. I'm very happy with that. So that's uh, always looking forward to how we can put our students into different uh, jobs. I always say it's not always you find out what you like, you find out what you don't like, which is just as important. Uh, the, I'm going to echo what Mr. Robinson had said about the robotics. It was phenomenal, it was truly phenomenal. And it was so nice to see all, and the students were saying it too, to come back again and to be where we were before. And it's not just Mount Alice students. You see them all interacting with each other and playing around. And now we have a new, uh, was a practice field that was nice. Instead of setting it up in the commons and everybody was on top of one another, now it's all the way in the aux gym, which is really nice. And again, thank you, kudos to uh, Mr. Uh, DeChico. Always does a phenomenal job. Congrats to all the students and warm thanks to all the mentors, volunteers, and organizers. And also a shout out to Mr. Miller and his group, because I heard there was a problem that Mr. Chihiko said in the beginning with the heat or something. Mm -hmm. You guys showed up, you guys fixed it, and nobody ever knew there was ever a problem with it. So thank you again. It's like the urinals now we're with the heat. That's good. You're always up there with it. Thank you. Um, happy Pi Day to everyone for tomorrow, 3.14. Mr. Helene, I'm sorry that that's the last pie you're going to get from me, or unless I see you somewhere, but I always give it to Mr. Helene, I give it to the math department. Um, that's the math science person in me. Uh, and let's see, I also, Lynn and Gail, again, just to echo what everyone else had said. Thank you. Phenomenal job. You guys always do that. Always keeping us on the straight and narrow with everything. Uh, let's see, I think I had, oh, not the most important part. Um, I could have brought it up as old business, but not. Mr. Strelacci volunteered me for this at one point, and then Mr. G uh, Dr. Gales always is sure to ask me any updates. So I'm happy to also tell Ms. Famira, who was a big promoter for this and doing this, we're going to have a breakfast with a board member, and it will be at the Bud Lake Diner, and it will be next Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So it will be... Do I get free breakfast as I go? I, I try, I try, Chris. I try. This Saturday is the 18th, right? The 18th. This is coming, yeah. Yeah, the 18th. What time is it? 9 to 11. Yeah, it's before that. Uh, so, and again, I, I think that's a great way to uh, just bring the community back together with everything and uh, coming out and, you know, we cannot answer personnel questions and different things. Dr. Banjo will be there, right? Checking, Checking the date for the um, district science fair. Oh, that's why I did it 9 to 11. Wait, what time? So you can go before and then you can go after the science okay, fair. Okay, got it. <laughs> oh, um, and it's going to be, you know, enjoy a nice cup of coffee and a treat. It's kind of like the coffee with a cup. So instead we're going to be doing that and we're it's basically for opening the door to bring community and DOE members to heaven. <laughs> Unformal, uh, inform, sorry, informal, 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 <laughs> sit down together and in a nice relaxing environment. And again, we'll be in s'mores, I hope. I guess that's the best place to do s'mores. And Bud Lake Diner was so, you know, great, uh, gracious. And they said, got flyers, tell, give it to us, we'll sit up there. 
and anywhere else that um, on their Facebook page they also said they would do. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wiemet. Before we go to Ms. Melendez, let's just make sure that we do the correct count. We can't have more than five of you there if you're yes. interested in going. We'll make sure no one is allowed like Mr. Lenier. Oh, if there's no free breakfast, I won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. This is a great idea. We've been trying to get this going for quite a while. Uh, go ahead, Louisa. Yes. Um, hi. Um, since the last meeting, I have the opportunity uh, to go to the schools uh, for free across America. I went to Mountain View, uh, St. Shore, and Chester. That was a great experience. Uh, reading to those kids, the energy that they have, and you know all the love that they have to share with others, and so enthusiastic. And the teachers, and the aides, and the entire personnel were very, very welcoming. So I appreciate that. It was a great activity. So those parents that didn't have the opportunity, or even staff members and board members that didn't have the opportunity to volunteer this year, uh, please do next year because it's a great experience. Um, the Air Force Auto, Junior ROTC uh, went in competition in New York and they came in a very good place. They did a very good presentation. So congratulations to them. Uh, we are so proud of all of them. Um, thank you to Ms. Lynn and Ms. Gail. Uh, thank you so much. You are a cornerstone uh, for mm -hmm. our function and mission here. And you are awesome. Thank you so much. And to answer all the questions that I have sometimes, and uh, helping me out, learning the ropes. So thank you so much. Um, also, uh, the robotics competition. That was fantastic. It was so energetic. Uh, so those students in competition. And it's really, uh, the volunteers were awesome. Um, I used to volunteer for years for that competition. So I appreciate the volunteers and Mr. DeChico, he always have excellent, oh my gosh. Uh, he's a master at that activity, really. Um, Ms. Evelyn, which is the coordinator for volunteers, she's fantastic also. All the volunteers, Alisa in the, in the kitchen, Cheryl, uh, students, parents, they are all involved. Um, uh, mentors, uh, Mr. Stansberry, um, he has a tremendous opening and he welcoming all our sponsors, uh, especially one of our big sponsors, Picatini was there, uh, all the high chain of command, they were very um, amazed to have this uh, opportunity coming back in person. Um, because it's not the same, it's the, the energetic is contagious, so you can feel it. Um, mentors, they were ex-mentors also, alumni taking pictures with their ex-mentors, so it was a very nice uh, activity because back in 2020, uh, when the, this competition was on hold, uh, those alumni that came this year can have like that closure for their experience in uh, for the robotics competition, so um, and they did excellent job. One ninety three, it was awesome. They are freshmen, so it's robotics is so complex, and they came up in fifth place. Uh, it was fantastic. In fourth grade, I guess it was a it was fantastic. See how they kids ninth grade they flourish, uh, they get the robot right on doing the most complex uh, functions for the robot in autonomous uh, compared with all other the school and we're the only team that were all nine graders. So we're very proud of them. A more fantastic job. They came number one all the, almost all the time, only one round. They were number one ranking for all the teams that were in attendance. Uh, so Mark uh, has a very good um, 193, excellent uh, for the rest of the season. Follow them in Twitch, you will see the matches, and you will learn a lot about the boys. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, we have International Extravaganza. That's uh, the World Language Club invited. Um, uh, the people is going to be at 5 p.m. at the high school. Uh, they will have international cuisine. They will have a different cultural activity. It's at the high school, please go, get your little ones over there and have the experience to get different uh, cultures and learn a little bit. Uh, I plan to go. Um, 
Thank you for all the parents and a member of the communities that come to these meetings. We need you. We need to hear your voices. We need to hear your concerns. We need you to express uh, your feelings, uh, issues, and any concern. Kudos for those also, uh, because we need also motivation. You know, we all are in this together for the community, for the kids. So thank you so much for those that always are in attendance and always face your comments to us. And we invite more people to come, please. Um, on Saturday, we're going to have the breakfast with the board member. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so all our welcome is going to be at the Bud Lake Theater. And it's 9-11 because we have the science fair, the district science fair, and it's going to be at the Manolis High School on Saturday, please go. The, ninth fair, uh, the science fair is going to be 9 to 1 p.m. So please get your kids. If, even if your kids is not competing, bring them, because next year they can compete and they can learn always something. And we also, as a parent, could learn something new. Um, and I think that's it. All right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. This is Narcisse. Can I just interject one piece to piggyback on what uh, Ms. Moore just had to say? In addition to Mort and uh, Beta being the top teams at the tournament this weekend, two of the other top teams were coached by Mal, Mal alumni. Uh, Brandon Holly from Massachusetts and Eric Jones from West Windsor North. So the legacy continues. So it speaks volumes to our program. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's my turn. Um, congratulations to all the robotics uh, students. I also heard they had a fantastic Florida trip um, prior to competing this weekend, and we're very much prepared. I also want to say thank you to the middle school music department. The middle school hosted a music festival for the students this uh, past week. They also had fifth graders that came up and integrated and got to experience some of the music programming. The kids had a fantastic job um, time. Um, congratulations to all of our state wrestlers that went down to Atlantic City. I had a great pleasure of getting to see some of them. Um, I'm glad to see that here the Holocaust trip is off running and they're having a fantastic time there. Um, also wanted to give a little plug, please come out see Mama Mia um, next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Tickets are going pretty fast. Um, I will be at the Candy Ground Station. Um, bye bye. bye. Um, I also want to say that next month, Mr. Zayer, you might like this one, um, there is an, the high school students are doing an advocacy program. Um, I got to sneak peek the vaping, anti-vaping program. Um, our students that put together a program against anti-vaping also submitted it to Moms Against Vaping. They'll be utilizing that for other educational purposes around the country. And Moms Against Vaping will also be present at the advocacy uh, program. Um, so there are students that are definitely advocating um, and understanding. Um, and I look forward to also attending the science fair this weekend. Very excited. Um, it's always a great time. There's also a, additional educational programs that are had at our science fair when we do the district wide, so the kids can participate and do hands on activities too. So please come out and see that. Thank you very much. We're going to swing over to Mrs. Fenton. I don't have as much to say as these guys. I'm not a, I'm not a talker. But I, I wanted to congratulate the, uh, congratulate the robotics. Um, I was so sad to admit that I was on college visits all weekend. But last year when I went during that snowstorm, it was unbelievable. I'm sure it was even better this year because they just keep getting better. Congratulations to ROTC, to the wrestling. Um, I'm glad that we finally got the Holocaust trip in. I think that's a wonderful experience. Um, I'm always feeling like I'm forgetting to congratulate somebody because there's just so many awesome things here. But I do want to um, say, Mr. Helene, I, I'm sorry to see you leaving, and I wish you the best of luck. And mm -hmm. that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Zyre. Uh, yes, Mr. Helene. Oh, wait a minute. What? I would <laughs> also like to say thank you to the two of you, Gail and Lynn. You guys are so super, and I, I, you know how I feel about you. Thank so you. thank you. Sorry. No problem. Uh, Mr. Lean, uh, sorry to see you go. I like the uh, peaceful retirement. That actually sounded nice. Um, I'd like to thank Lynn and Gail uh, on their work for the audit. I have to agree with Mrs. Canary uh, that like the stuff that comes out of your brains is, is just amazing. It's uh, The knowledge that you hold is fantastic. 
Uh, I'd like to congratulate the wrestlers that went down, the, the six of them. Um, I'd like to congratulate the Unified Bowling. They had a couple of medalists, and I think they're taking it to the next level, which is phenomenal. Um, I went to two science fairs, uh, Sandshore and Tints. Whoops. Um, fantastic stuff. Like I, I'm, so I teach build um, science, so it's you, a lot of times you see the same ones over and over again. And there was some really good ones. There's a kid in Sandshore that like built a wind tunnel. And I, I love aerodynamics, so I, I was very excited about that one. Uh, the kids were really phenomenal, very knowledgeable. Uh, it's a testament to our, our science individuals. I also went to the steam night at Mountain View. Uh, it's been a while since I walked the halls of Mountain View. Um, it was <laughs> it was uh, <coughs> very great uh, to see. Uh, there was actually there was one kid that's actually I've seen him. He's an ROTC cadet. He's also from Mort, and he was phenomenal with the kids. It starts with a W. His last name starts with a W. Um, but he was teaching the kids how to fly drones, and I wanted to. He was in the midst of it. I never got to say how great he was doing. Um, so if he hears this, uh, fantastic job. Robotics, they, uh, again, as Mrs. Narcisse said, they got, with their alliance, they got third in uh, Florida and 10th overall because they had problems with their robots. So uh, again, that's a national event. I mean, they're competing nationally. So kudos to them. Um, congratulations on the weekend robotics as well. Congratulations to the ROTC. Uh, and the last thing I want to kind of jump on here, if I can read it, I, I turned 50 today, so this is, uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, Did you sing happy birthday now? No. <laughs> um, so I did want to talk about the excellence of the volunteers. Uh, it is amazing how many parents come out, uh, these PTO, um, PTA people um, that head these things up. And uh, I, I've worked at Tints Road, and it, you get a lot of accolades. Jeannie, I don't know if you knew this, when I saw you at the other day, parents were talking about just how phenomenal you, you are. And, and you, you ladies bring everything to this table. Mrs. B, I, I haven't been down to Mountain View since four decades, except for the other night, but I'll get down there. And um, I want to thank you so much for all that, that you do for the district. It, it, it helps to support both all the children and, and, the, and the teachers. So thank you. That's all I got. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stilacci. Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, first of all, I've always said that the two toughest positions in, in education are superintendent and BA. You have no idea all the things that they have to go through and constantly. I, I don't know how they can shuffle everything they have to do. And to Mrs. Jones, you know, for years I've been extolling her virtue. Without her, I don't know where we would be half the time. I lived through a point when we had a BA and a, an assistant who was nothing but a clerk, who could do nothing close to what Mrs. Jones does. And we're very fortunate for her. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend the Mountain View father-daughter dance. It was a nostalgic trip for me because of my two daughters, and of course that was about 100 years ago, but uh, I'll tell you, they had some turnout. Those kids had such a wall that the, the middle school cafeteria was just completely crowded. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to say. What was? Oh yes, thank you. Because if I had forgotten to tell you about Mama Mia, I would have home. So, thank you. That's it. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Aquino. Just very quickly, I also want to thank Miss Libby and Mrs. Jones for all your hard work and everything that you do for us, really. And you're always there at a moment's notice to answer any questions that I have. Every time I call and have something a concern or a question, you're always there. Also, I want to congratulate Dr. Helene and thank you for all the years of service you've provided us to our students, to our administrators. And happy birthday, Mr. Zyre. <laughs> <laughs> you, you kind of blew it for me. I was waiting, and you, and you said it. So, happy birthday. It's, I did not, but I think oh. someone did. It's a big one for Mr. Zyre. That's why I say that. I'm done. Thank you. Kid always started a fire. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, it is a lot. I think my comments will be for once. <laughs> Jeez. So, so I also wanted to, to thank uh, Ms. Jones and Ms. Libby. It's just incredible when you can email someone on a Saturday or a Sunday not expecting to get a response, and you get a response. That just shows their dedication and commitment to the district. 
So I appreciate you for everything that you've done for me over the nine years, everything you've done for this board, and what you have done to make sure that our district is in the best financial position it can possibly be. Because that in turn means that our kids and our teachers and our support staff and everybody who's a mosaic in this district has the resources they need to make us a great school district. So thank you very much. I also want to wish Mr. Zier a happy birthday. And uh, hopefully we'll get to cut some cake later. I want to thank all of our, our parents and community members who have come up to, to speak on various items of interest, of public interest uh, to this board. That's critical that we hear your voices. Welcome, Mr. Aaron, uh, to our board meeting. And I'm going to end by saying that, as you've heard, because I, I've, I've gone to some of the events that my board colleagues have gone to, and they've just been amazing. So I'm not going to re repeat what you've heard. But I just want to share with you that based on what you're hearing from this board and from the community, our district is thriving. And we want to make sure that you are happy and satisfied with the direction that this district is going in and that this board is doing the best that it can and the administration is doing the best to make sure that Mount Olive is a stellar premier district. And day in and day out, you have the board, you have the administration, you have teachers, and everyone up and down the staffing line, making sure that our students have the most rigorous, experiential learning opportunity that any school district can have. And so for that, I'm thankful and grateful to everyone who sits on the dais, who sits in their offices, who is out and about. I see guys out salting tonight. Uh, so there's just, this district is clicking on all cylinders. So I just want to say thank you to everyone, even our security officers who make sure that we're safe, uh, for ensuring that this district is running on all cylinders. And that concludes my comments. But I am going to ask for a motion for the board to go into, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. So a couple of different things. First of all, not a problem. I just wanted to um, wait until the end to say um, doc, thank you to Dr. Halleen. Certainly my time in this district um, only started this past summer, but you were one of the first people I met. And certainly I believe that we made a true connection the, um, that time that we met. And I thank you for your many years of service. But I am also very excited about the future that holds for you to spend time with your family and your lovely wife who deserves all your time. <laughs> You like how I plugged that in right there, Mr. H Dr. Helene. Really <laughs> and, <laughs> and certainly, I also want to remind um, everyone that we have a rising, rising freshman um, curriculum night tomorrow at 630. Certainly, if there's a, a postponement to the weather, we will make that announcement. We welcome all current eighth grade families to come to the high school and learn about all the phenomenal programs that we do have being offered. So we have teachers, we have students, we have our supervisors who are going to be on hand to kind of really walk them through the experiences that they're going to have at the high school. So please come out for that wonderful event. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pull a uh, Lisa Fenton and say, oops, I got one more. <laughs> this, this will be quick because I also want to thank you, Dr. Helene. I don't know if you remember one of our very first encounters might have been like the early 2000s when I, I wrote a letter to, to Dr. Reynolds regarding uh, Gifted and Talented and my son. And you were in the meeting, Ms. Wiemet, Lawrence Conroy, Dr. Reynolds, and, <laughs> and we really put our heads together to uh, figure out Gifted and Talented and equity and access for all students. As a result of that, that was my very first interaction with the school board and the school community on that level. And as a result of that, my son and all of my children have been able to thrive in this school district. And I'm proud to say that next month, he will graduate from the University of Michigan, the Ford School of Public Policy with a master's degree, and he's headed to work for Deloitte. So, and it all started with the intervention that happened in that meeting. I'm very thankful for the leadership that you've shown, the grace with which you've done it, consummate gentleman and a consummate professional. So thank you so much for the legacy that you leave behind and what we will continue forward with.
And on that note, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion for the board to go into closed session. For matters of personnel and attorney client privilege. So moved. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any questions or comments? Okay. Well, how, All in favor? How, how long do you anticipate? <laughs> Just asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Say 20 minutes or half an hour. If you can keep it under 15, he'd be happy. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Is that good, Dr. Giordano? That's good. Okay, hang on for a second. Hang on for a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any opposed? Okay, the board is in closed session. Action may be taken.